Welcome everyone. We're here yet again with another awesome voice actor interview. Here today we are actually at Crunchyroll Expo 2018. Uh, 13, wow. <laughs> Talk about a blast from the past there. So how have you been doing today? I'm um, good. Good. It's pretty early in the morning, so I uh, can't complain just yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> had you coffee yet? Yes, I had coffee. I got Lucky a you. <laughs> breakfast sandwich, so I'm, I'm full. I'm full right now. Like you have not even had, we just came all the way from Los Angeles. We, we were in, on the car since 3 a.m. Oh wow! Yeah, it's it's been it's been a journey. It's been <laughs> a journey of a lot of things oh, that wow. happened. <laughs> so t tell me, um, how did you begin your your voice acting career? Because I know you were uh, a PA, right, a, a production assistant before you. Became, that is true. Uh, a that voice is true. Actor, right? um, how I became a voice actor is pretty much uh, I'd always had an interest in cartoons, and I had studied filmmaking growing up. Um, I went to college for filmmaking and I graduated with a film production degree, um, but I always had an interest in voiceover and had pursued that and studied it and uh, just sort of on my own time. Um, and after I graduated from college, I was working as a production assistant on a bunch of reality TV and such, uh, and it wasn't great. It was a very hard labor for not very good pay. Um, and. Uh, and at the time, I was doing a lot of independent voiceover um, for like independent games and, and web videos and stuff like that. And uh, I was doing okay with that too. So I decided maybe I want to shift my focus a little bit more because I liked doing that a little bit better um, than the grueling PA work that I was doing. And uh, so I, um, I lived in Connecticut at the time and I moved to Texas uh, to live with some family and get my feet on the ground. Um, and just through doing that, I ended up getting a demo made out of the studio there and doing some classes. And, um, and then eventually I met Chris Sabat uh, and he, he heard my demo, liked what he heard, called me in for something. I booked that with him. Um, and then he passed my information on to Joel McDonald, who was directing at Funimation at the time. Um, and Joel called me in for an audition, and I booked that, and then the rest was kind of history. I just kept working at Funimation ever since after that. So what was your first uh, uh, voiceover you did at Funimation? What was the first series? The first thing I ever recorded at Funimation um, was Keita Suibuki on Good Luck Girl Bimbo Gamiga. So let's jump in right into everyone's favorite characters, and that's okay. Kony. From uh, Attack on Titan. Yep. Followed by Bakugo. Bakugo. From My Hero Academia, That's which, right. by the way, congratulations, there's a new, the movie coming out soon. Yeah, very excited. Can you tell me a bit more about your character, uh, Kony uh, Springer? Yeah. Uh, Connie. Uh, Connie, thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, Connie, man, it's so funny. When we did the auditions for Attack on Titan, um, I was still really new at Funimation. That was the auditions for that came up within a year of me working there. Um, and so I had very little faith that I was gonna get cast in the show um, because I was such a new name and I knew it was a very popular title. Um, and I, I didn't think I was gonna get cast, but I thought, well, I'll go to the audition, um, and just put my best foot forward and maybe I'll, Mike will consider me for something else in the future. Um, Mike McFarland, the director. Um, and I remember looking at the audition sides and Connie was in the book and I misunderstood the, the character sides. Uh, from the way that he was described, he seemed like a bully to me. And at the time, uh, I didn't think I'd be good at playing a bully, and now I play Bakugo. Uh, <laughs> but um, go figure. Right. Uh, so, but at the time, I didn't think I'd be able to play this character well from the description, and so I didn't read for him. Um, and I kind of just went for a broad spectrum to showcase my range and, and leave it at that. Uh, and so then when I got called in to record for Attack on Titan for the first time, um, Mike told me you're gonna be playing Connie and I didn't know who that was. In fact, I was like, isn't that a girl's name? <laughs> um, and, uh, and then when I saw the, the character, I was like, this is that bully kid. How did I get the bully kid? <laughs> and, uh, and so then we watched the first scene and I was like, oh, he's not a bully. He's dumb. That's completely different. Uh, and so I, I suddenly understood like, okay, this guy's more of the comedic role, um, but he's got a lot of heart and he's maybe not, maybe he's not the brightest bulb, but um, he, right, 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 yeah. you know, but he's, he's, uh, 
he's got a lot of heart to him. And and to be honest, I hadn't watched Attack on Titan beforehand, because um, if I had, I would have known that Connie was more this type of character. Um, but Connie probably would have turned out to be my favorite character, even if I wasn't voicing him. Um, because he's just so genuine, he has so much heart and like integrity, uh, and it's been it's been really cool getting to play him for now. Now we're in the third season, so many years later, because season one was so long ago. Um, but now that we're in the third season, we've seen Connie grow and and mature and become very serious about who his friends are and what do the relationships that he has with people mean. Um, and so I, I tend to think of Connie as, um, whereas like Aaron and Armin and them, there's there's so much about the focus of the intrigue of the show. Um, characters like Connie and Sasha, they're the heart of the show. Like you have an emotional, they keep you emotionally balanced while the other characters are dealing with the greater catastrophes. So you, you can say voicing the character, you grew on to the character basically. Oh yeah, very much so. Yeah, so Connie, uh, Connie's become one of my favorites. And, um, and I was very happy to, for for example, when we got to do the sequences in season two um, with Connie's mom and such, like I've been looking, oh, okay. I've been looking forward to that for years. I've known about that almost since we did season one. And yet um, he couldn't figure it out. And yet I couldn't. Well, <laughs> the character, right? Right, 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 well, by the time we had done it, you know, see, the manga was farther ahead, so I had been I'd become aware of it from from fans and stuff. <laughs> and so I was looking forward to those scenes for years, and for season two to finally happen. I was like, yes, I finally get to do this sequence that's so important for Connie's character. Um, so yeah. All right. So let's move on forward to uh, the most awesome, the most. Uh, probably the most popular character on your right. resume, yes. which is of course uh, from My Hero Academia, none other than Bakugo. Bakugo. Uh, how can you relate to him, if anything? Uh, well. <laughs> well, in comparison to Kony. Well, Connie. Uh, Bakugo, man, Bakugo has so much fire and so much spirit to him. Um, he really doesn't take any guff from anybody, and that is actually something that's a little bit. Uh, similar to me um, he's very driven and he goes after the things that he he wants um, and I'm I'm yeah. very similar very which direct. which is sort of like we were saying with my my origin story you know I, I went after that and and Baku goes the same sort of way you know when you when you want to pursue a career like voiceover or anything that's in art there are gonna be a lot of people along the way who are gonna tell you well that's gonna be really hard you need to have a backup you need to you know you're probably never gonna make it there are a lot of people who are trying they're all these things are gonna knock you they try to knock you down not maybe because they're trying to hurt you but because they're concerned for you and um, and you kind of have to have this sense of no I'm gonna make it and you push through it and and Bakugo embodies that same kind of thought is that he's um, he's incredibly talented and he knows it which makes him very prideful and, and arrogant but as soon as he gets into the school he starts facing off against other people who are just as talented as he is and also just as driven and so he has to kind of keep stepping up his game um, and that's typically where I find myself in Bakugo the most is the I'm going to surpass this I'm going to overcome this and I'm gonna to prove to you that I'm just as good as I think I am the best of the best so yeah so so before we finish this interview, actually, can you give us a little uh, voice sampler of uh, Connie and Bakugo? Yeah, sure. Uh, Connie's mostly just my own voice. Uh, in fact, when I get to watch Attack on Titan on like Toonami, I'm still like, oh, that's that is me. It sounds like me. Um, but Connie, uh, one of his best lines is, uh, "This big beautiful son of a bitch is our ticket out of here," <laughs> um, which is one of my favorites. And people always like that one. Um, and then, uh, but then Bakugo, Bakugo sits in a completely different spot of my, my body, um, where he gets really low and then in, in my chest and my throat. Um, and all he's ever saying is pretty, we have a joke about how much he just says like, die, stupid Deku, and uh, such things like that. So those are the voices. Awesome, well thank you so much for having us.